Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our annotation feature class tutorial. Um, remember last time we did labeling and um, I showed you how you can create different labeling classes and we have a whole bunch of craters in our data set and we class them by their diameter and we created five classes. Then I went into each one of those classes by right clicking and doing the labeling properties and I was able to choose which class that I wanted to manipulate. Okay, so we did class one, which was this Sharonov crater, and we changed the symbol size to 16, made it bigger than the rest, made it bold, all right? Then I went into class two and made those 12 points, okay, um, and changed the size of that text. But I didn't do anything with the small ones because I wanted to save that for this time. Now we're going to go into class five. We're going to select class five and we're going to make that annotation smaller. All right. Now the first thing that I want to do is down here in this corner we have the scale. Um, and that's the scale of our map on the screen. And I want that comparable to the actual scale I'm going to be printing this map out. And that's going to be at 15 million. Okay, I'm doing the whole planet and my map is going to be something like three feet wide by five or six feet long. It's going to be a big map. Okay, so 15, 15 million was the scale that I figured that that whole planet would be at. So I changed my view to be that scale. Okay, now I'm seeing the scale that the text is actually going to be on on the map. Now, coming back to our label, pro, uh, our label properties, I'm going to change the size of the smallest craters to a six point. And since there's a whole bunch of labels that are, that are bunched together, I want to put a leader line from the text to the actual crater. And you do that by creating, coming down to call out and changing none to, uh, you can do a simple line or you can have a little bit more control using background. And I'm gonna use background in this case. And I'm gonna change the leader line. I'm not messing with the background because I don't want it to have a background color, but I want to have a, uh, a black line, but I don't want it one point. I wanna make it half that size. So I'm gonna make it a little thinner. And I want the leader line to come out of the lower left or the base, the bottom right or left, depending on which side of the crater that I have my label on. But I can choose any one of these different types of uh, label leader styles. But I just want it to come out of the lower left, which is actually the default or the lower part of the text okay and point right to the crater right to the feature itself all right so i'm going to hit apply and it's going to change my text on my screen and this is six point text on my screen all right now with labels if i zoomed in and out that label is going to stay the exact same size it's going to stay if i zoom in it's still going to be six points on my screen. If I zoom out, it's still going to be six points on my screen. But in the real world, when you print this out at 15 million, you know, whether you take the map and zoom it in and out with your, with your arms, the size of the text isn't going to change. All right. So we have uh, six point text for that, uh, for those, for the, uh, for that particular size of, of crater. All right. Now, here's where we are going to create our annotation feature class. There are two different types of annotation feature class. One is a standalone and one is feature linked. A standalone would be an example if 
you had a mountain range it doesn't have a particular a particular point to tie the annotation to it's more of an area you want you, you, you create a standalone so you can put mountain range on your map but that mountain range itself isn't going to move around okay but if you have a feature linked annotation like we're going to link those to the craters meaning that if the astronomers ever change the name of the crater and you have it annotated you can go into the attribute table of the feature class of the actual craters change the name and that annotation feature class will automatically get that update if you go in and say if they say oh we had this crater in the wrong place and actually move the actual point the feature point then the annotation will also move at the same time if it was a standalone annotation feature class and you moved the crater to a different location the annotation would stay right where it was before but the actual point that it was pointing to m moved okay you get the point standalone feature linked feature link is gives you more control you don't you, you don't have to move the point change the name of the point and all that kind of stuff and then go to the feature class the annotation and change it too okay so if you link them you got less work all right so what we're going to do is it's really important that you have your annotation feature class in the same uh, geo database or the, as the features or you have them in the same data set and that's what we're going to do here so we're going to create a data set i'm going to right click on annotate my anov my gdb for this project and I'm going to select new and I'm going to create a feature set. Okay. And that feature set, we're going to call it Mars surface because I'm only going to have surface features in this particular data set. And that coordinate system, I want to be consistent with my digital elevation model, which is the equal rectangular Mars projection. And I, choose run and what that's going to do is create a data set so we'll get rid of this and now you see underneath the gdb i now have a feature data set called uh, mars surface now inside of this is where we're going to create uh, our annotation feature class but remember we want our annotation feature class and the features that they're linked to in the same data set this crater file that I have, this feature class over here, is somewhere else on my hard drive. But I want to bring them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Mars Surface Feature Data Set. <laughs> right click and I'm going to import a feature class. And I'm going to import the craters that are currently in my project, even though it may be in a different uh, geo database. I want to make a copy and bring it and insert it into this data set and that output is going to be called um, um, Mars craters okay so we're creating a feature we're creating a new feature class called Mars craters and we're importing the, the craters from this other geo database into this one i hit run and then when that's done it doesn't take long for a small data set like this because this is just a sample of my mars stuff okay and so now you see that inside of mars surface we have a feature class uh called mars craters and it's added to our our uh table of contents over here now remember, if you remember from the last video, the default naming of the symbols were the range of crater diameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it consistent with this one. 
and we are going to click on the symbol and go back to our defaults and we're going to just change our labeling it's not changing the value it's just changing how it's seen on the screen we're going to make that consistent with our other one by changing this to five four three two one okay so now over here they're consistent with our labels that we had before all right and close that now if you notice we have two texts all together because we have two feature classes uh, two feature classes and they're the same thing but the text are moved the labels are moved because they're interfering with each other and ArcGIS Pro 2.7 doesn't like that and so it moves them around so you can have them both well we're going to turn off our first craters that we did in the first place okay so now we're back to what we looked like when we did our labeling okay now we want to now what i could do is i can totally remove this from our project because we don't really need those anymore okay so now i have our feature class that's in our um that's in our uh, project now the feature class for the craters now I have the labeling all set up the way that we want it and now I'm going to turn this into an annotation feature class and you come down here to convert labels to label to annotation and we're going to use the map that we're using and we're going to do a single layer if I, I could change this and if I had m multiple feature classes in here I can do them all at once but I'm only doing one one layer at a time. I'm going to do the craters and our feature layer is Mars crater, which is that new feature class that we created. The output geo database is going to be our our Anno video geo database. Our suffix is going to be underscore Anno and the name is going to be the name of our output is going to be crater names okay now this is where we need to say that we want to convert anything that's unplaced we still want to have that in our database so we can uh, turn them on if you'll notice some of our some of our craters don't have labels next to them well that's because uh, there was some conflict, all right, and it didn't get placed. It didn't find a good place to set it, so it just said, I'm not going to place these. I'll make an item called unplaced, and uh, well, you can do it. You can change that with the, with the attribute table. So I'm going to convert those unplaced labels to unplaced annotation. I'm also going to, right here, create the feature links, and I'm going to want it to create annotation when I create a new feature, like if I add a new crater. And I want you to update the annotation when the feature shape changes or gets modified. All right. And I'm going to hit run. Doesn't take long for a small data set. All right. So it's done. So if you notice over here in the table of contents, our labels are turned on and we have an annotation feature class okay and the annotation feature class has five classes just like our symbols did all right and we can turn those off individually now I'm going to show you something by default when you first create an annotation feature class labeling for the features gets turned off automatically so if I turn those on you're going to see doubles okay but I can right click and turn those off and now we are looking at the actual annotation and not the labels so now you'll have more power and I'll sh introduce that power just really quick before we uh, end this video and we'll talk more about editing that annotation in the next video so we have created our annotation feature class and it also has five classes so I can turn off 
the class one annotation and I can turn off the second class annotation and I can turn off the five, I can turn off any class that I want. So now all our labels that we had little lines coming from, they're all turned off. So they're acting like the labels did before, but you have more control. You can actually manipulate the annotation, change the text, the size, the location, and all that kind of stuff now. But unlike the labels, when I zoom in, save this here real quick all right and when I zoom in now you're gonna see that my text stays it it's it's proportional to the scale now okay when I zoom in and out because that that scale of 15 million was the reference scale it's gonna be that text size at that scale all right and since I changed the scale the text gets bigger as I zoom in, it's kind of like you taking the piece of paper and doing this. <laughs> okay. Now, what you're, we're going to talk about in the next video more is how you can play with, manipulate the text and have control. But you can go into edit. You can select text. And you can actually move things around and manipulate the text and stuff. And I'm going to show you more of that next time. All right, so thanks for sticking with me. So you got the basis of setting up your annotation feature class. The next video, we're going to be messing with the, the annotation itself. All right. Hey, please subscribe. Uh, hit the like button. Hit that bell for notifications for upcoming videos. And share this and tell your friends. And we'll get more into this annotation feature classes next time. So we will see you later.